Run it, yeah, run it, run it, oh I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah, yeah I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah, yeah I really feel it's my time Scott, it's great to see you. We've come down to Fleetwood to have a chat with you. Everybody knows that you've hung up your, your boots, you're now management. You hung up the, the hair clippers as well, because it's, <laughs> it's a new look for Scott Brown, manager. The hairs, it all started in lockdown. In the first lockdown, and the kids wanted to see if I could actually grow my hair. So you weren't allowed to go to hairdressers anyway, and it was home haircuts, and I'm specialising these, these days. Yeah, I don't mind it now. It probably makes me look a little bit less aggressive than what I, what I used to and a little bit younger too. In terms of this new role, manager of Fleetwood Town, how much have you enjoyed the new challenge for you in the next stage of your career? It's been great since coming down here and for me to have that learning curve from all those managers at Celtic and I speak to Brendan, I speak to Gordon and I speak to Lenny as well. It's good to phone these people and ask for advice and to get that understanding as well. I need to learn as much as I possibly can because I knew it was going to be a short career. You retire at 36, 37 and from there it's to sit in the house and become a home dad. It's not really for me. So I uh, always love being involved, whether it's a change room, whether it's a coach's room. Obviously this season your team's accumulated more points with about 12 or 13 games to go in the league than in the whole of last season. You've also got the team further than the FA Cup than they ever have in their history before. So those things... You've done your stats, yeah. I have, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, sure, I'm guessing from a, also from a supporter's point of view, they must see that's, that's improvement and that's, that's things that they must enjoy seeing in your team. For us going forward, it's been good so far because we lost 86 goals or 84 goals last year and we're nowhere near that. We only got 40 points. We're in a better place than we were last year, but there's always still room for improvement. I think we're the first or second in high press in the league. Yeah, we've lost a few goals here and there, but you're always going to do that. And for us, the, those stats are hugely in, in, important to myself and the way we, our team wants to play because you want to press teams high up the park. Throughout your time at Celtic, you kept a note of every single training session because I suppose in the back of your mind, you knew this moment would come where you're, you're the man in charge. I learned a lot from understanding not just becoming a coming to Celtic and running about like a maniac and Gordon made me a midfielder he sat me as a single pivot box to box and I played right midfielder so you understand different positions as well which I'll never understand as strikers that's that's my one thing I'll never understand we're here just to, to chat about this night on on May the 18th at the, the Oval Hydro two Celtic legends yourself, Mikael Lustig, 22 trophies for you, 16 for him, that's a lot of silverware. You left and, and, and you know the, the Covid season when there was fans weren't able to get into the stadium, so I suppose there wasn't that chance to say a proper goodbye. That's why I wanted to do that and it's a great opportunity for myself to go and speak to the fans, to go and say bye and thank them all for their support for myself over the years since I came in as a, a young 21 year old and when I could run about wild for 90, 95 minutes to I finished at 36 in front of no fans in the stadium which was, it was disappointing because it was, it was hard, it was not, not the season that anybody ever wanted. I'm just delighted to go back with Lusto as well because I've not seen Lusto since I left and he left. How important was it for someone like him to come in who, you know, you know when you look at him, you can rely on him? When I first looked at him, when he first came in, I'm not sure what I was looking at really. This guy with this long, flush bar barnet, big skinny boy with tattoos dotted here, there and everywhere. And I'm like, who, who, who are we signed here? And I was like, Lenny, who's this guy? And he's like, I'm telling you, Bruno, he's a good player. And to be fair, he, he grew into the club, he loved the club, he, he, he became a huge part of the dressing room and he, he was a leader as well. And that's, that's why I love Lusto to bits. Another thing to mention about this event, and I know it was really important for you when you were captain as well, uh, the work of Celtic FC Foundation and they're, gonna, you know, they're the beneficiary of the net proceeds for this event. Yeah, the foundation has been brilliant with myself as well and we were setting up charity events and they were trying to help us out as much as they possibly can so there's a lot of nice people at that club that want the best for whether it's Celtic Football Club or the foundation and they all come together and those proceeds they put to great use whether it's round about Glasgow or it's further a field as well and they look after as many people as they possibly can in poverty and that, that's what we want, you, you want Glasgow to come a brighter place and to come a better place through the Celtic community. 
you haven't been back to Celtic Park other than as an opposition player. I mean, you must be pleased when you see the, the success that the club's enjoyed over the, the, the last 18 months or so. As soon as it all started to click into place, it was a delight to watch. You've got inverted fullbacks, you've got pace up top, you've got unbelievable work rate. And that probably doesn't come overnight. That comes a lot from hard work on training pitch, belief in your assistant managers and coaching staffs putting that into you as well, but also your captain as well, which Cal and people like that have adopted to that style of playing because it could easily have turned and the lads could have went, oh, we don't want to be playing like this, we don't feel that, but Cal would have stuck up and made sure that everyone in that dressing room was positive, that they followed the manager. No matter what happens, what manager comes in, you follow. And that is what a good captain does and that's what uh, we can match doing it now, he's doing a fantastic job. You've seen him develop as a player, as a personality and as a leader now. You, you must be delighted with the way oh, he's, he's leading. He, he is, and we are two completely different characters. That arm bird obviously was a wee bit bigger because my arms are bigger, but that was literally it. But for me, couldn't have handed it down to anybody better. And Cal's been there for a long period of time. He went away to Notts County on loan, earned his badges done what he needed to do to come back into that team and since then he's been a breath of fresh air as well because he's an exceptional footballer. He's got that drive to go forward and he loves the club to bits and it's what you want as a captain. You, you need somebody that's got that trust of the fans but also has got the fans back as well and know what they want and he produces it week in week out.